Hey folks, welcome back to Slay the Spire Ascension mode with me, Sinnoh. Uh, we're going to be doing some more silent today. I believe we're on Ascension mode level 9 now. Um, I'm feeling in a silent mood. So we're going to continue with the silent. Bosses are tougher now, which means that they have more HP and they take longer to kill. Um, one thing that this game has is new music. Yes, believe it or not, they've actually added some new music to the game. Um, Let's see if there's anything else. Bosses now give 50% 50 more score per act. Fastest victory is not updated, blah 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 blah. Daily climbs that have leaderboards, global only at the moment. So uh, I'll be doing some daily climb videos quite shortly, but I'm gonna do another ascension mode video for the time being. Um Yeah, but the biggest thing that's different is that the game has new music. So you won't be hearing bump 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 well. You will be hearing it a bit here because it's like I think it's the music for the first act but we'll see anyway now I gotta think a little bit here how are we going to do this ascension mode carefully is the answer I hope successfully is the answer I hope it looks like we can get a couple of fights in here campfire it's a little bit easier for the silent to take bad damage from elites quite early so you do want to be careful of that our boss is the Hexa Ghost, which does a big attack that scales to your current HP. Um, I don't really like obtaining curses early because if you get something like Regret, it is a run ender, I believe. I'm going to remove a card from the deck. Again, is it a bit of a boring option? Yes. Is it the option that makes most sense and is quite reliable? Also yes. Very yes. So it's been a little while since I've recorded Slay the Spire. I hope I haven't gotten really rusty in the meantime. It's just difficult to fit everything in these days, although I do... I enjoy recording, again. Possibly because I enjoy the games that I'm playing and I don't feel like I'm living a lie. Or I'm just playing shit for YouTube because I think I have to. I probably... <sighs> Maybe... No, I can get the lethal here. Never mind, I'm good. Nice quick combat there. Um, I haven't really gone with a deck. <coughs> Excuse me, still got that cough that specializes in finisher. I don't believe in this ascension mode series, so I'm gonna maybe try that for now. I do like finisher if you can build, if you can get a bit more energy and build lots of shiv cards. Finisher is very powerful as a card. So let me think. I'm gonna to want to block him. Six to you, I guess just six to him with the finisher as well, whatever. Maybe I could have done that differently. I'm not really sure about that. Okay, you need to die. Get out of here. I can block this one easily. Unfortunately, starting off with 63 health in this ascension mode as the silent is a little bit more annoying. Um, oh, it doesn't really fit in with the finisher, but I, dash is a very nice card. Good value, you know, it makes you feel very safe. I'm gonna go for another strike here and then finish her for 12. That's a very nice way to start this combat. I took one damage there. Bit naughty, a little bit spicy. Don't worry about it. This blue boy is going down like a clown. Let's see, what have we got here? Oh, another really good two cost card, even though we've just taken finisher earlier. That's quite frustrating. It would be nice to have infinite blades though, if I'm going in that direction. So I'll try... Oh god, these are all good cards. Infinite blades is probably the weakest here actually. I'll take infinite blades because I already have dash. We'll see what we can do. This combat is a real humdinger, in my opinion. This is a very tough one. Because you don't want to get absolutely cloned by the sticky gremlin, and this mad gremlin's a pain, and then you can't leave this gremlin alive because he'll just destroy you. So it's a bit difficult. We need to try and take him out ASAP. We do have a energy potion though. Which I might use here actually. Because if he gets an attack off, it's a nightmare that. Gremlin Wizard, it's something like 24 damage. 
Don't know why I used, didn't really need a defend, unfortunately. Might have been a bit of a waste of the potion, actually. But whatever. Shield Gremlin. I learned the other day that Shield Gremlins can actually attack if they're the last one alive and they have no other options. I had no idea they were capable of such feats. But those little Shield Gremlins, they can actually bring out the thunder if they've got to. This is like the worst hand for killing. Remember, every time you hit the mad gremlin, it gets a strength. So you want to hit it like you mean it. You don't want to be goofing around. Um, I guess slice would work with the finisher. I like Phantasmal Killer, but without four energy, it's very clumsy and hard to play. And I don't usually go for Slice. It only really works. This is a bit of a weird deck that I'm making so far. Slice only works if you have like lots of card draw, to be honest. So you're like drawing more than you would have, more than you should have, more than you could have. Get rid of a defend here and maybe go for the sneaky acrobatics as well. Even though I'll probably pick one up anyway. Um, We're gonna want to upgrade neutralize. Wow, upgrading neutralize first and silent. Wow, wow. Um, I don't really like becoming cursed with parasite. The relic you get from this makes vulnerable less powerful, but it's a hard fight to win without taking quite a lot of damage. So we might want to consider using our explosive potion here. We can play finisher for 12. So that would go down, this would go down to 16. I could expose a potion them all. I'm gonna get survivor actually just now. <sighs> to see what's gonna happen. I'll probably have to use explosive potion. Let's just do it now so I don't like make bad math happen. Um let's do neutralize on you. Uh, see, if I kill this one off, I will have Vulnerable for the turn, which is going to make them quite nasty to deal with. So what I might do is kind of getting them all down here. I have quite a lot of block as it is. So if I get three strikes or something next turn, I can kill them without taking tons of Vulnerable damage. Might have been a better way of playing it, I'm not sure, but... Give me that finisher, baby. Odd Mushroom, when vulnerable, you take 25% more damage rather than 50. Not a huge upgrade by any means, but it is something. Um, I guess Sucker Punch, if I want to keep weakness up, is not a bad idea. Because the other cards that keep weakness up tend to be quite energy intensive. Things like Leg Sweep, which costs two and stuff. And if I'm going for lots of attacks at a single turn, it may be a better way of doing it. I don't really know how to feel about Sucker Punch. I feel like it's quite weak. But sometimes it's helped me out. Upgrade two random cards and lose 14 HP. Yeah, I think I can afford that. Two strikes. Unlucky. More shops. God, so many shops. Well laid plans is alright, but this is quite a... I'm getting a bit sick of not really getting anything good here. I already have one flying knee. I don't think I need another. And I'll probably rest at the final campfire for the boss, just in case. So for now, if I'm using finisher a lot, maybe finisher would be a good choice to upgrade. If I'm kind of trying to make that like a cornerstone of the deck here. Might work out well for me. I find with this fight, getting rid of the spike slime early is not a bad idea. Because he'll just, he'll make you frail and stuff and it's kind of a nightmare later on. Upgraded strike, thank you. And I've played two attacks, that's 16 damage, quite a lot actually. It's kind of like a bad skewer at the moment finisher sometimes, but you can play it when you have one energy after you've played all the things. So it's a bit more malleable, shall we say. 
Actually, I should have played Sucker Punch there, not Strike, I think, is what I played. That was a mistake. Took more damage than I should have. Oh god, all these expensive two-cost cards. God damn it. This is why I don't like <laughs> playing around Skewer. Unless I get tons of Shiv stuff on the go. I'm gonna be a nightmare. <clears throat> Doing quite well though, here. Strike. Flying knee, and then finisher for the for the finisher, shall we say. Cloak and Dagger is really good. That, that fits what we need quite well. You can do Hexagos with slightly less HP because of the way it's like big attack scales, but not with 29, I don't think. That's kind of asking for it, IMO. Strike, and then Shiv. Finisher, 3 eighths. Very nice amount of damage to be coming out turn one. All things considered. Initialize, thankfully, for the weakness. 6 fours to 24. Not a perfect defend by any means, but I think that's the easiest way of doing it. Alrighty. So let's keep the weakness up somehow. I don't really want to take four damage, but. Yeah, let's take the four damage and just be a bit more ham about it. Dash is like an easy way of blocking and still doing damage. And the extra bit of energy from last turn really worked out there. Whew. Alrighty. Find me. Strike for nine. Upgraded strikes and defense are actually quite nice, all things considered. I know they're like the worst thing to really upgrade, but I still quite like having it. Six times two is 12, in case you didn't know, my good friends. Awkward turn. I did it though. Now, this would have been a better turn to have finisher on. Perhaps. Just keep attacking away. This boss is okay. I think this boss is maybe one of the ones that people have a tendency. It gets hard when you underestimate it, which is a surprisingly common thing that people do. They go in, they're just like, well, it's big attack scale, so I don't give a fuck. And then they end up getting too many burns and stuff where they get killed off by this big attack and all that jazz. But I'm just eager to get this fight over so we can hear the new music. I'm excited. Okay. I gotta be careful. Now things are getting a little bit dicey with the burns, yeah? That's a lot of damage to be coming out. Drawing into neutralize is great here because it allows us to keep the weakness up and it's a free attack. Broken Dagger means that we can walk and get another attack and then Finisher for 24. That's a really good little combo. Not perfect block obviously because of the burn but enough that I could consider doing it. The nice thing about burns is that they do damage so it's not like lose HP, it's damage which you can block important to remember the distinction. It will save your life sometimes, trust me. There we go. 23 gold, swift potion. And what do we have here? I don't mind bullet time. People love it more than I do though. I think adrenaline is like S plus tier. There's almost no reason not to just take it all the time. Oh, Sneko I would have been great if I had taken all those two cost cards earlier. It would have been so good. Oh, I still, I have quite a lot of two cost cards. And there's nothing here that's giving me four energy. So to be honest, I'm giving up on the finisher plus dream. Let's go for the stack OI and just start building more expensive cards. I, it's awkward to switch. I know. Hang on, the music is a different. What happened? I played a round of this before and the music had changed. And now the music is just the same as always. 
<laughs> Let me pause the video for a minute and just see what's going on there because that's kind of weird. So apparently, the new music is randomized. The alternate track, as they call it, is randomized. So the reason why I haven't got the new music yet is simple RNG decided not to give it to me. That is bullshit. That's f that fucking sucks. It's like the new shady feature in the game's like, nah. Oh well, I guess you'll just have to listen to this video for my lovely soothing voice and my superior ascension mode gameplay, right? Couple of raised eyebrows out there, I can imagine, right now. So. How are we doing? Not bad. Awkward deck. Sneko Eye is a very strong relic though. Kind of counts like an energy relic, all things considered really. Although I could be it could be good for me to build a couple more two cost energy cards into the deck to make the most use of it. Um I may well it's an unavoidable elite. I think maybe this one is easiest for me. Ugh, I really don't like doing Ascension 9. <coughs> I meant to do an elite. Ugh. Ugh. Aaron, Jesus, what have I done to offend you? Okay, well, there's a neutralized for zero, which shouldn't be something that I'm happy about, but I am now because of fucking Snake Y. I'm feeling a little anxious here. I don't really want to take loads of damage. But the best way to... This is just a, a bad draw, I think. That was just bad. So we're gonna have to wait a turn. Okay, well, leg sweep for zero, I guess. Strike for one. Oh, this is a terrible deck for Snake Y at the moment. Fuck. That was a mistake. What have I done? This is gonna be a hard one to salvage, boys. Hard one to salvage. Flying me for next turn, by god. Give me a feckin' chance, will ya? Whee! Sucker punch for zero. Thank you, Sneko. Nice thing about infinite blades is that it's add a shift to your hand. Which means it won't randomize cost. Because it's not being drawn from the deck, it's just in my hand, so it'll always be zero. Okay, so shiv. Free defend, I guess I might as well. Leg sweep. Um, strike plus. Then normal strike. Then finisher. Hey, actually it was useful. Shockeroonie. Can't quite believe it myself. So if I play dash here, it gets rid of his shield quicker, so I could get more hits in that aren't blocked to get past to get past the plated armor. Which is what I want. He's about to do a really annoying debuff, if I recall correctly, but this isn't the worst one. There are other monsters in Zone 2 that do terrible debuffs. So I'm gonna save the potion for that. This plated armor sucks now, though, thankfully. Yeah, it's frailty, isn't it? Oh, God. Everything in Zone 2 has, like, a real hard-on for frailty, I've noticed. They love it. They're crazy about it. Okay. I'm gonna go for the dash this turn. I may have missed out on lethal there. I'm sure someone in the comments will let me know if I missed out on lethal there. But doesn't matter. It's good. Backflip plus is quite nice for this deck as eviscerate. Eviscerate could be very good. Backflip plus is also very good because it allows you to draw more, so you have more chances to randomize into a lower cost. I'll take Eviscerate. And... See, the problem with getting Jax is that it randomizes cost when you draw it from the deck, so it's actually a bad card for me, unfortunately. I usually quite like to get Jax than the Silent, because the Silent's like got a little weedy throwing arm, but if you get Jax, bro, you can get some crazy cards. Because, like, obviously they scale really nicely. Um... But unfortunately, things aren't quite so favorable for the old Sinnoh beats this time. This is a very 
awkward deck that doesn't quite work, if I'm being honest at the moment. Well, there's Eviscerate for zero means I'm basically doing 18 damage right now, which is mental for zero energy, as you can imagine. There's no way of me doing enough damage to kill him, is there? Unless I do some sort of flying knee poison potion? Because Neutralize would only do 4, so he'd be at 10. I can't really play anything else after that unless I wanted to do Neutralize then Defend. We'll just get rid of, getting rid of him altogether. It's only a poison potion. Don't get so attached. You must think of these things as your tools and not something to be attached to. Spare the rod and spoil the child, that's what I always say. Yeah, I think it was worth me defending there. God, they do so much damage, these things. It's such a pain in the ass. Alright, this is a good finisher turn. Absolutely, 100%. A++++ would buy from again. There we go. Nice. Mm, no, I'm not really feeling these cards right now. Ooh. Oh, it was just a, a random chest there with a mango in it. Mangoes are good. Especially for the silent. That's a lot of extra HP. Oh, I'm Lord Snacko. I'm going to Snacko your Snacko. So you get Snackos in your Snacko eyes. Idiot. What a feckin' idiot. Get out of here, Lord Snacko. Whose name in which we pray. All the same. I don't give a fuck. Okay, he's gonna do... <coughs> he's gonna do 13 damage, excuse me. While I die in the background there. Oh, that's so much damage. I can't really block it. Let's do it. A swift potion. That was bullshit! Fuck off. Mmm. Mmm. This is not good indeed. Not good at all. So with Finisher, I would be doing 16. With Slice and Flying Knee, I'd be doing 13 and I'd have an additional energy for next turn, which is probably the best. I don't want to chance the acrobatics here. I really don't. It might give me the block I need, though. You know what? No, but I'd have to. I'd have to get something with zero cost to make that worth it, which is too much of a gamble, probably. Let's just go flying knee and slice. Oh, ow! Lord Stecko. This is what happens when you talk shit. Okay. Good dash. Good strike. Good shiv. Good mythical morning. Just playing the defend for the sake of it, really, there. Okay. So we're in lethal range next turn, for sure. Which is good, because he just put weakness on me. Or frailty, or whatever. Vulnerability, that's the one. Um. Well, see, the thing is, the boss is a collector here, and we don't have any AoE attacks. So it might be good for me to get dagger spray. But backflip plus is so... I'm going to go for backflip plus just now. Because it gives you quite a lot of block. And it also allows you to draw more cards. Like I said earlier. With Snake Away, you, you kind of want to draw more. To give you more chances of getting like zero cost or one cost cards. I can help quite a lot. Okay. I'd like to get rid of the bird early. Let's apply a big weakness to him and then start striking at the bird. I don't want it to buff itself. Because those birds, when they get a buff on them, they're a nightmare. Otherwise, they're quite easy to deal with, especially with some weakness. Buying me for the finisher. 
and the full block here. I should have used the uh, Ancient Potion because he applies vulnerability and this guy hits hard as it is. If you're going to use an Ancient Potion in Zone 2, this guy, when he does that debuff, is a very good candidate, I would say. Highly would recommend. But luckily I have Leg Sweep and Finisher here. So I managed to deal with that fairly well, but he... This guy sucks. He really sucks. Because he makes the fight quite hard and long. And he puts tons of vulnerability on you, so you really struggle to get rid of him. And then when you see these big attacks, you think, I'm going to play all my skills. And then you get tons of dazed cards and you die. So I kind of fucked that up. I might just have to go a little bit ham here. really do hate this guy a lot. I don't want him to keep applying that debuff on me, even though he's getting quite low health. Let's we'll see if Acrobatics allows me to get lucky. Oh, just Survivor. I don't really need Survivor, do I? And every skill that I play, he shuffles another Dazed into the deck, so I might as well just let them exhaust themselves. Dash and leg sweep. And turn. There wasn't even any point in me using an ancient potion because he applies it so frequently that I just can't get rid of it. It was a waste. Fuck. One cost of this rate is great. Okay, he's nearly dead. Ugh. I could have kept the Ancient Potion for the boss when he does that big debuff turn. Miss, please. Expertise for this deck could work out really well if I didn't have a lot of cards in hand, but the problem is I tend to draw quite a lot. Backstab doesn't work because you... I, I think it doesn't work. I don't know if you draw the card or if it's just in your hand. That's the problem. I think it's just in your hand. But it does take a draw slot up. It says start each combat with this card in your hand. But I don't know if that means you draw it from the deck first. I, I think it means you just get it. Mm, let's try it. At least I could say I learned if I fucked up there. Oh. Dexterity potion and maybe regen potion would be good for the boss. Uh, not the boss, sorry. The floor. The dexterity and strength will be good for the boss. War paint upgrades leg sweep and survivor. I am quite okay with that. Alright, actually scratch that. I'm probably gonna need these potions for these guys. The strength potion in particular will allow me to get rid of these minions really quickly, because you want to keep popping these minions out as the fight goes on. Backstab does get drawn at the beginning. Oh fuck, what a terrible card for me to have picked up. This is a really doomed run at the moment. Really doomed run. I'm gonna struggle with this. Hey. You know what? I'm just gonna have to fucking get good, scrub. Play well. I could do 30 damage with finisher now. I'm gonna do it to the big guy and then kill this off next turn. Hopefully I'll be fine. Shit. Well, at least we learned something. Those of you out there might have been wondering as well as me how that innate card works with Sneko Eye. Now you know. Get rid of him. Play I'm a survivor. Sorely needed, unfortunately. Eviscerate with the extra strength. Very nice. For one energy. I might just... I'm going to use infinite blades this turn. It's always a little bit of damage coming out. It might, it might help me to pop off the gremlins that come out. These two, they do a lot of damage, but they're the easiest to deal with. They're very straightforward, which is nice. You know, there's no, like, whack fucking... Like, crazy passives that they've got to deal with, you know what I mean? You fight them, and then you fought them, and then you've won. Does that make sense? 
Seven times three is 21. But I have a finisher plus here for 40. Unfortunately, I can't play anything else without losing the access to finisher, so I'm going to just play that. That's way too much damage not to just take a little bit extra here, I think. Way too much. Like, I'm getting close to having beaten him now. Mostly due to the strength potion, in all honesty. Ooh, the finisher! Finisher's still working out for me, despite the fact that it shouldn't really in a Sneko deck, so I'm quite happy about that. Runic Dodecahedron is the troll trinket, relic, whatever. Troll relic. I almost never get this fucking stupid piece of shit to work. I'll take an expertise plus. I'm not really sure if that actually works with this deck, but again, so far, this is like a learning run for me, of all things. Um, so what do I want to play next? Probably Adrenaline Plus is actually a good upgrade for me. Because it makes it so that it gives me two energy. So I can play it if it costs two energy and it's just not really a loss. And if it's any less than two energy, I actually gain, which is really good for me. So let's get rid of this fucking backstab. Not bad, damage-wise. See, the problem with Expertise Plus, which I now have just realized, and I totally should have, is that Snackwire lets you draw more cards at the beginning. So Expertise is a terrible pickup. Oh, you can tell I'm recording this at 2 a.m., huh? Misplays. Like, Expertise... At least Expertise Plus is eight cards. So it's easy for me to go under eight cards and then be able to use it granted, but fuck it all. Ah, looks like I really screwed the pooch on this one. So he's down to 11. Got rid of him. I can apply weakness to her as well, which is quite a nice way to start. She's not very strong, but she sometimes comes out with a, a fair whack, shall we say. Playing a slice for three energy? Mm, no. Thank you. This, I'll like almost never get Runic Dodecahedron. Fuck this car. This relic sucks. Yeah, actually, Expertise Plus was probably one of the worst choices I've made in the series so far. Top tier misplay from Cinnobeats there. Although, not entirely useless, all things considered. Another backflip plus. This deck is getting, well, it's at 25 now. I probably won't want too many more cards, but wow, does it suck. <laughs> this deck is not good. I'm making it work somehow, but... Another Sneko fight? You're supposed to be dead, little man. Why are you back? What is all this nonsense? Let's just get lucky with expertise. Why don't we? Why not? That was actually quite a lot of damage there. Stekawai is a very strong relic. I can't understate that enough, or overstate that enough even is how the phrase actually goes. It's a very strong relic. And I think a lot of new players look at it and go, it's just like a gambling thing for fun, isn't it? No, it is good. Trust me. It's very strong. I still say that the best energy relic in the game though is probably Mark of Pain for the Ironclad because you can actually make its debuff into a plus for you. That's how ridiculously strong it is. So if I play Acrobatics and I discard something, Eviscerate should cost one less. I think that's how it works. Yeah, it went down to zero, which is really nice for me. So it's still, don't forget that that still has its ability on itself. Mm, I could play like Slice Flying Knee Finisher, but I think I'd rather get the block. Oh, 
No, I want to play... Mm, let's play Flying Knee, actually, so that my next turn is better. Okay, this is good so far. This is a good hand. I like this a lot. Lots of zero-cost cards coming out from RN Jesus, aka Sne Sneko-san. Sneko-sama. Lord Sneko. No step on Snake. Adrenaline, which gives me a bit more energy because I've upgraded it now. Way more defense than I need. Just, just die, please. All right. I don't ask for a lot in life. I'm a good boy. I pay my taxes. So just fucking die, will ya? Um... I don't know about this setup, to be honest. Setup Plus is a good card. But the problem with Setup Plus is that it costing zero is kind of the point of it. If Setup costs energy to play, then you, it's not good, really. I'm going to rest for this because this fight could be quite nasty for me. Have I drawn... I thought I took Dagger Spray earlier. Did I just totally not take Dagger Spray? Did I accidentally skip it? Oh god, I don't know what's up with me. I'm playing really badly. I think this is going to be a, a run for the history books, folks. More of an abject exercise in not how, how not to play Slay the Spire. At least I'm getting an extra energy from this now. I want Backstab out of my fucking deck. I don't want to keep drawing it. Using the Dexterity Potion, of course. Best way to start off the fight. So, bosses are tougher also means that their minions are tougher, which is particularly nasty. I'm sure you'll agree. I'm gonna stack the weakness up on the boss. Oh, I thought I might get lucky there, but I didn't. Okay, not a full block, unfortunately. But, I'm doing alright. So if I play a finisher for three here, I can kill that minion. So let's start damaging the other minion. And then play the finisher on him. Three eights are 24, right? Yeah. Not bad, but kind of slow. All the same. I think a free backflip would be nice here. And then I could fly knee to kill him and get extra energy for the next turn. He's going to do the big debuff, unfortunately. But if you have the minions gone by this point, you're doing well. If he still has minions alive when he does that big debuff, you're in trouble. That's when you know that you're beginning to lose the fight big time. Is if he still has minions when he does the big debuff, you're like behind the curve. But right now I'm on the curve at least. God, I'm just playing like every card at the moment. Busy turn. Actually, I'm going to draw more, because now is a good time. There's Finisher! Excellent! That's exactly what I wanted to draw this turn. Cloak and Dagger gives me two shivs. I am weakened, unfortunately, but six sevens is a very nice attack to get off all the same. For 42 damage and a full block. That was a good use of the Swift Potion there, if I do say so myself. Although I could have used it a bit earlier in the turn. If I use Survivor here on the three cost neutralize that I would never consider using, then Eviscerate goes down to one energy. I think I'm gonna Flying Knee rather than use Finisher. Less damage, but next turn's better. Unfortunately, that was a load of damage I took there. But I'm keeping up. It's not the smoothest sailing, but I'm still sailing. You know, our ship is going somewhere. Like, I think Cloak and Dagger here would be a slight damage increase, but it's like so slight that I don't really give a fuck. I'm just gonna, just punch it. Just punch the guy. All right. 
Oh, he does not want to summon his minions at the moment, does he? We've changed this fight quite a lot. I find it a bit hard to keep up with. I think I might as well leg sweep rather than dash here. For the full block. And extra weakness. I don't know if I'm going fast enough. Try backflipping to see if I get lucky. Let's see. Mm. So I've already got so much weakness on him. That's not really the issue, is it? I mean, don't get me wrong. The weakness is keeping me alive, but keeping it up is not a problem. acrobatics here the vis rate would become zero cost but I basically would say goodbye to expertise let's play expertise first okay good this could be a good finisher turn acrobatics he's gonna do 24 damage though vis rate for free leg sweep dash into finisher Yes, I think that's the most damage I can do here. A zero cost finisher. I cannot believe how often I'm getting finisher for zero and one energy. I think that's just good luck. And now I get 40 extra damage here for zero. That's crazy. I can't really believe this is working. I don't think it should be working if I'm being honest with you. Well, yeah, look at that. Come on. Yes! Look at this! You're kidding me! Eviscerate into the finisher. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, Sinno luck right there, folks. This, this deck should be crap. And it's not. And the reason why it's not is because of Sinno luck. Pure and simple. Um, and Venom would be kind of a weird... Oh, I don't know if I really want to start splashing poison there. <coughs> Excuse me. Because, like, a Venom's... Go in Venom's going to randomize its cost. So if I get it for cheap, then yeah, it's a nice little buff. But if not, then I'm kind of... It's a real nightmare to try and make sure that I can play it. Um... Doppelganger isn't a terrible choice here because it'll always cost X, right? So if I have a turn where I can't really play anything because everything costs three, but I still have two energy, the Doppelganger will still be useful. Phantasmal Killer? I'm actually going to go for Phantasmal Killer, though. Um, And this is a Sozu, for sure. I mean, for first of all, I don't even have any fucking potions. Um... I don't want to keep cards in my hand because if they're really expensive, I can't get rid of them easily. And Astrolabe is the... whatever. Just give me more energy, okay? Okay, Donu and Deca. Just big numbers. Kind of is how Donu and Deca works. I also need to get rid of their... Artifact quite quickly to start applying weakness, otherwise they'll get out of hand. I don't really want to chance any elites or anything in this floor. Sometimes chancing elites in this floor totally makes sense if your deck is strong enough, but this deck is a bit random. So like, an elite could work out easy for me and I could just not care, or it could be a nightmare. You know? And I don't want to take too much of a chance. So this guy's definitely in... Um, finisher range, but I actually might do a kind of ham turn this turn. I'm going full ham and I'm going to do tons of damage here. Sacrificing a, a bit of HP and some deck space here to get him down. I find though that on this floor you kind of just want to be patient more than anything. It might have been better if I was just patient. I wish he would get to fuck, I'm being honest with you. 
leave me alone. Mm, this isn't the most efficient way of doing anything, but... Let's just strike on him. And then just eviscerate to get rid of that. I know it's like a kind of waste of the potential damage there, but... I couldn't make him explode. I can't multi-hit him, otherwise I'll kill myself. So, might as well just get rid of the annoying boy. Although, to be honest, they're all annoying boys in my eyes. Backflip for three is expensive, but... Gives me tons of blocks to just pop this. See, we have so much energy now that even when I get really unlucky, it isn't a total, like, end of turn move, you know? And that's really nice for Snekowai. Snekowai is a really nice kind of energy relic because it also works really well if you get more energy. Most of the time, 3 to 4 is amazing upgrade, almost necessary basically, and then 4 to 5 is like a little bit less amazing. But in this scenario, especially with something like Finisher, I'm kind of being rewarded here. The only problem is this spiky boy is being, you know, a spiky boy. The classic spiky boy. And this, this is crazy, I can leg sweep for 2 and then just play everything almost for 0. Actually, can I? Because if you kill him, the hit that you kill him with doesn't reflect, so I think I'm fine there. Um, I think I'm doing well with backflips and cloak and dagger at the moment. I don't want to take any more. I don't want to go crazy. Uh, lose a strike for free? Absolutely. We've got tons of cash here to consider buying something nice. Bearing in mind, things like Deep Breath are usually amazing, or at least good, but because of the way Snake Eye is working, it's a bit hard for me to play that reliably. Ginger isn't great for the boss, it doesn't really do that. Well, it doesn't weak weaken you, pardon me. Um, Masterful Stab, the meme card. Do we have any more guaranteed shops coming up? We do. Ah. Tools of the Trade would be a good one. Actually, but I think I'll go for pen nib here and then Maybe remove a card And then I still have 209 gold so by the time I get to the next merchant I could be able I should be able to buy another relic which might make the run for me Might put me that little bit over edge wise so that I completely dominate That was a total gamble. I actually misplayed that hand spectacularly there. I should have played finisher or something and just taken the damage. Instead, I kind of got like the worst of both worlds. Okay. Supply leg sweep. My knee. Again, it's a waste. I wanted to get a lucky draw. I didn't. Okay, adrenaline for one is worth it, I think. This fight isn't going to go on for too much longer anyway, so I might as well. Shiv. Sacrobatic. I'm not going to... Bearing in mind that this is a Phantasmal Killer turn. So I'm doing absolutely shit tons of damage with everything that I play. Like so. Yeah, Phantasmal Killer is going to work out really well for me. I don't think a second Infinite Blades is a good idea. I wish you could upgrade Infinite Blades to let you have two shivs rather than make it an innate. I feel like making it innate is not really the most exciting upgrade for it. So by discarding there, Eviscerate became free, which is very good for us. Especially because these are annoying boys. And we need to get rid of them. So I'm gonna pen nip that. And then kill him. So we've done quite a lot of damage to him and we took the other one out. That was a better way to do it than just concentrating on one guy. It's important to remember sometimes 
to not overkill things by just autopiloting and instead spread the damage if you have lethal. It's an easy thing to fall into a trap of doing though. When I was worse at this game, and I used to fucking suck at this game as I've said a few times there, I used to sort of autopilot a lot and I'd make big mistakes, but I'm much more careful now. Or I like autopilot but correctly. I think that's one of the ways you get good at any video game, is that you play it so often that a lot of the processes that you used to have to really think about become like second nature to you. Like playing correctly becomes second nature to you. It's just kind of the way that getting good at a game works, in my opinion. Just, just get, get rid of it. I know I could have let it exhaust, but... So if I hit him... How many times? I've got pen in now. So 16 times 4. I'd have to hit him 3 times, and I'd, I'd still have way enough block for all of that. Yeah, I'm good. I may have missed out on lethal on that turn, despite me talking all that good shit two seconds ago. So he's the last boy in the fight, so if I hit him, he won't explode. I'm glad I was right there. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank God I was right. Leg sweep plus is great to pick up. I just love leg sweep. I love just building tons of blocks so they can't hurt me. I really do. Um, so I think here, dash is a good upgrade, eviscerate is not bad, but acrobatics allows you to draw one extra card, and in this deck, one extra card is the difference between being able to play something or just having no luck. So I want to make sure that I'm drawing as much as possible to ensure that I'm not like wasting a turn. So single eviscerate now does 18 damage for me. So he's dead. The next turn in this fight is usually a bit of a pain. If you don't get rid of the orbs, which I can do. And I got rid of backstab there. I was considering phantasmal killer, but getting rid of the orb is quite important. You don't want to have these orbs still flying about, in all honesty. Keep applying leg sweep. Considering I have finisher here, I could strike. Finish him off with the shiv. You shiv and you. Neutralize for one. And then finisher for two, which is also pen nibbed. 16 times five. And tasty, crisp 80 damage. You see how I'm not really thinking as hard and things are just playing out in my head quicker now? I imagine at the start of the series, I'd have to really think about that move a lot longer. I promise you, I'm not just getting lucky, I'm actually like doing better. Which is a nice thing. Um, let's backflip here. Okay, well that's all of my card drawn, I didn't get anything from it. Great! Fantastic. Gotta love it. Ooh, look at this turn. Just beat the shit out of him. Almost. Oh, I didn't know he healed. When did he start healing? I didn't know he could do that. What the fuck? Whatever. I, I did not know that that guy healed. Okay, none of these cards are particularly great, unfortunately. I mean, Dagger Spray, technically the last boss I'm fighting here is an AoE, but you wanna... It's a kind of AoE fight that actually rewards you more for, like, focusing the donut down. So you're rewarded for having high single target damage rather than AoE. I'd say none of the final fights on the third floor really reward AoE heavy decks, which is a shame. AoE is more important for the end of Zone 2 than it is for Zone 3. Okay. We're doing quite well here. I don't need to rest at the moment. Um, I feel like I have enough weakness 
I know that when you upgrade this, it applies to weakness, which is nice. Mm, okay, let's go for that, I think. Unfortunately, like, Phantasmal Killer is usually a great upgrade. But obviously, because of Sneko Eye, it's like... Doesn't matter. It could cost like a million energy. Every time I draw it, it randomizes anyway, so... Toxic Egg. Whenever you add a skill card to your deck, it is upgraded. That's a really good card to get on the 43rd floor. Fantastic. This is a pen nib turn. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot I could have done with that. So I didn't. I'm just gonna play Fantastical Killer. Okay, so Eviscerate. Good start. Strike as well. Free leg sweep. Thank God, because he's doing tons of damage. Um, I got leg sweep. Uh, not leg sweep. Backflip. Oh, into the finisher. So shame we don't have enough for the cloak and dagger plus there. But actually, let's fucking go. Twelve times three for thirty-six. Oh, I played that too early there. Whoops. Sorry, misplay. I'm not always perfect. I come close though. You gotta love those zero cost cards when you draw them and to eviscerate with a pen nib. You gotta love it. God, I wish I didn't have the slice card. So much better draws I could be doing. Really. This is a good finisher turn. It's a shame that we're weakened though. Actually, I probably should have played Phantasmal Killer and Finisher there. There wasn't much point in me getting the extra proc of it. Also, I had enough energy for it. Sino. Talking all that good shit earlier on, and now I'm making all the classic misplays. Bad turn order. Not drawing cards, and then playing cards, then drawing at the end of the turn and realizing I had more options. Come on. Come on, expertise. Give me something good for the pen nib. Eviscerate is very good for pen nib. I'm happy with that. Might as well. Um, I can't get lethal this turn. So I'll just get flying knee for the next turn. Which means I'll probably, it's very unlikely that I wouldn't have enough here. Oh, careful. There we go. Managed to handle that fairly well. None of these cards are that good for me. Ooh, I actually really don't want madness. So I'll take the heal. I know that curse is going to suck, but I can remove it. It's a little heal as well. Taking madness used to be like the insta play when this that um, event was first around, but things have changed now. The meta has changed. Hmm. We're actually bringing out a lot of damage here. More than I can really handle. That was kind of the best of both worlds, but having four of them is a lot to deal with. So unfortunately, we had to take that 13. Okay, so eviscerate. Not bad. The question is, what do I do? Let's just get rid of him. Make it easy on myself. Let's see Phantasmal for next turn with the pen nib. I'm gonna hold off now. I could backflip and try and get lucky, or I could play both defense for a guaranteed 10.
Again, I'm taking a bit of damage here. I'd rather not, but... You know, can't be helped. <laughs> so I have Pendiv and Phantasmal Killer. I'm going to be doing tons of damage this turn. Let's just Cloak and Dagger and sucker punch this thing. So I just did 36 with one hit, which is really nice. I can pretty much knock him out now. Expertise. I should have played that Shiv first. But I wanted to see if I could get another block card. So I could do this. Okay, let's let's try acrobatics. Discard that three cost Shiv. Ouch. I haven't got the ability to get any more defense this turn. So I'm just going to concentrate on doing loads of money, lots of damage because of Phantasmal Killer working out really nicely for me. So they're going to die very shortly. If I can get my defense up, I can take them out. And two zero cost backflips is a really good way of doing that. It's a shame they have pen up there. It's kind of wasted. There's Alchemize, one of my favorites to randomly play. Another dash might be quite nice. It may be overkill all the same. I really want to get rid of Writhe. I don't want it in my deck. I know I could have played Shuriken. In fact, I should have played Shuriken, really. That was a terrible misplay all the same. I think, oh, I should have played Shuriken. See, I'm going too fast. That's exactly what I said I shouldn't do earlier. Dingus. Shuriken would have been worth having the fucking writhe in my deck. If I get through this, it's gonna be an absolute miracle at this point. Okay, so I have a Viscerate. I can play for 18. Just leg sweep. Acrobatics to get lucky? Oh, infinite blades, okay. Oh, that shuriken would have been great because I'm playing lots of attacks every turn. Oh, I'm such an idiot. If anything costs me the run now, it's going to be that. Okay, so I can actually do nine damage exactly to him. Once again, folks, my hubris may have gotten the better of me there. Let's see if I can get lucky. It's not really what I wanted, but... I wanted more damage, didn't I? Well, I've got Pendant next turn. Fingers crossed. See if expertise gives me something oh, like an eviscerate I was hoping for. So I can get rid of him. Do that, because I had the burn there, so I needed a bit more block. Okay, so let's backstab for zero. Nice way to start. Possible finisher turn coming up. There's also a shiv. Um, unfortunately, finisher is three energy, which is quite a lot. Burns only two here. I think actually eviscerate phantasmal killer is a better way of doing this. And we'll just take the two as a sacrifice. Okay, so dash is 20 damage. Boom, see ya. Backflip. Didn't get anything that would beat me doing dash actually for the finisher. Um, and let's get this, I think. 
Okay. <coughs> Let's rest up. Oh, I could just tell that if I lose this, Shuriken will be the reason. And I'm really pissed off about it. But wish me luck, folks. Once more into the breach. Which is also a very good game, by the way. So we have four energy per turn at the moment because we're at full health. I kind of would like to keep that. I find that the Dodecahedron tends to hit you for more. So I kind of want to, to go for him. Damn. I didn't really draw anything that I wanted to there. Eight fours though. It's some damage. And a full block at least. Okay. Slice. Free defend. Adrenaline for the draw, because this is an awkward turn for me. I think Sucker Punch into Leg Sweep on him is a good idea. So full block again to keep the Runic Dodecahedron going and then Phantasmal Killer for the next turn. Fingers crossed. Yes, okay, these are some great draws here. We're cooking with gas, folks. Let's do this. Yes, yes! Great, okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can do another backflip here. I want to get rid of his artifact. Unfortunately, I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. Penneb is in two. So like strike plus into eviscerate for zero. 72 right there. And I think cloak and dagger is a damage boost over slice. And you know what? I'm going to play another Phantasmal Killer, because I can afford it. We could get rid of the Donut here if we get lucky. So I'm going to use a zero cost survivor on the Sucker Punch. And then Flying Knee him. And then Expertise. Okay, there's a finisher here. He's going to do 13 times 2, which is 26. And I'd have that with a single leg sweep. That's obviously a good choice. Mm. I'm going to do 20 damage with dash at least. That was an unfortunately disappointing turn. But again, I'm actually... I can't believe I'm actually managing to get enough block every turn. That's what's really surprising me here. So he's gonna do 30. Hurting for 30. That doesn't make sense. Hurting for 30. Okay, let's see. Oh, I can't. I can't get enough to fully block here, so I'm gonna lose the runic dodecahedron, unfortunately. Damn. So, seven, eight, nine. This is the double hit. Expertise and hope I get lucky. I did. I guess backflip. Shit. Ah, oh, the donut's gonna get one more buff off, unfortunately. Which is really annoying. But I can at least kill him this turn. So I'm gonna play Infinite Blades fucking finally. Let's see what expertise gives me before I commit to dash. Ooh, a free leg sweep on him. Donut is gone! Thank goodness. I actually think I should have used Strike on the Donut, but whatever. I can still win this. I think. He's going to do 36 this turn. 
Let's just shiv him. I mean, I could survive right here, but why? I mean, I could just probably use a dash. Well, actually, Survivor would have given me one more block, and he already had the block anyway, so that's why. But at least I'm one step closer to Pen Nib. So that's something. Okay, Shiv. I think Eviscerate is worth it here. But if I can get. Eight. Nine. There we go, that's much more damage. Oh, I would have had so much strength by now if I had taken Shuriken. He's going to do 36. I have some nice low cost blocks here. That three defense is way too expensive for me. I'm going to use Finisher this turn. So if I play a strike plus here, I'll do way more damage. I think it's worth taking a tiny bit of damage from him without playing that defend. Because six eights are 48. So we're doing good here, we're doing good. Shiv. Eviscerate. Oh, I forgot about Pendib, didn't I? I might draw something that's good to pay nib into next turn though. So let's just keep the weakness up. This guy, he doesn't scale at this point of the fight. He just uses his shield occasionally. I don't know what I did there. Why did I short circuit? That was a waste of time. I'm thinking about the pen nib too much. Okay, eviscerate. Actually, let's acrobatics first. Seven. I'll go down to six cards when I play this and I can draw four more. Oh no, I actually do get penalized. Man, what the fuck? You'd think I'd never played this game before the way I'm playing at the moment. Let's just play eviscerate already. I'm playing around pen nib too much and I'm making dumb mistakes. expertise my hand back up. The next two cards are dash and leg sweep. I'd rather have them for next turn because you'll attack, right? So good. They're not too expensive either. Let's just play acrobatics to see if I get lucky. I did not. But there's a zero cost finisher, a bit more damage. Mm, I'm kind of playing badly now. Almost inviting disaster, one could say. I'm getting bugger all cards as well while I'm at it. At least I've got weakness ticking over here. Sucker punch for 18. Okay, he's nearly dead. Come on. Come on! As long as I can get past the block this turn. Which I'm beginning to think I might not be able to. So I might just try and block as much as possible. Because I have quite a lot of block this turn. Yeah, I don't know if I have anything that can do it this turn, but I can block enough and then the block will be gone next turn. So I'd be safe anyway. Just take the guaranteed win here. Yeah, there you go. Like a single shiv will do it. What a crap finish. Sometimes I get a little bit too into it near the end and I play badly on zone three and that's a very bad habit of mine. 889 was quite a lot of damage I did to the heart there. Still, another victory.
despite the fact that I built the deck in one way and then went for what is essentially like the opposite meta on silent and I still managed to get a victory out of it. I can't be that bad, can I folks, if I'm managing to pull victories out of my ass. So there you go. Misplays ahoy, I still won. What's good? Slay the Spire. Catch the fever. No new music. The game is a lie. Anyway, thank you for joining in for another Slay the Spire episode. Hopefully next time it won't be recorded at 2am and I'll play a little bit more intelligently. Or not. But until next time, thank you for joining in. And I will see you for more Ascension or a daily run perhaps next time. Take care and goodbye.